Uh, welcome guys to my second part of this video tutorial series that we are working on on ba developing basic you know a job application using AngularJS 4.0 with the Visual Studio Community Edition 2017. So like I said in my first video, so we'll be writing everything from the scratch. So I have my Visual Studio 2017 application open. So let's go ahead and create a start writing code. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project here. And it's going to be the ASP.NET Core Web Application. Um, and I'm going to name this as Job Application 2. And it provides you some template right here. Um, it provides a bunch of options whether it would based on the type of application we are creating. But in this case, we'll be using the AngularJS. So we're going to choose this AngularJS option. And we're just going to say OK. OK, so this is the basic layout provided by the default by, the, by, the, by selecting that, just by selecting that template. This is the lay, this is how the layout of the source code looks like. In this folder called client app, that's where all our client application, I mean all the, all our uh, J, uh, all our Angular JS code will be residing. All our tests will be here, and all our application level, I mean the client side application level code goes into here. And just like you know, ASMBC, we have a controller. All our controller we're going to write here. And all the infrastructure code that is needed, for example, all the dependency, all the, all the code related to TypeScript would be inside. All the configuration is here. I'm not going to talk about this one, this one yet, but okay, this is the basic structure. So um, we can run this application just to see how the template really looks like. But uh, keep in mind that you know, like running for the first time might take a while because it has to package all those uh, all those a different uh, dependency it has to download from the NuGet pa new package manager it will take a while so while it building this one I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and once it is all built I will continue okay so you know Visual Studio is now uh, it's, it's it's it packages our, app our application and it's basically our client side application a default application provided by the template kind of looks like this so let's basically um, but of course you know we're gonna we're gonna change this well we're gonna change this application this is uh, some of the feature they just the sample application that the, the Microsoft provided by default so so it is now uh, built and it's uh, running. We're going to go ahead and start writing our code. Uh, I will be working on the server side feature of the application first. To do, to do that, let's go ahead and define a model for our application. I'm just going to go in here and add a folder called a model that would contain the server side model. Uh, we need a couple of, we need to define a couple of classes. Let's call, uh, let's define a, a object, a simple class. Okay. All, basically, all we're trying to do is we're basically trying to create this job application. We have a, now a model call, called developer job. This defines some property for this one. Um, this is going to be the ID, the primary key of that that object. And let's define some properties like job title. We need to know what the title, like software engineer or whatever we are hiring. And the name of the company is called another property called company name. Um, let's define um, company address. Of course, this one doesn't really exist. We're going to go ahead and create an object called company address. We're going to generate this one into a new file. 
So we have developers of and company address. Company address will have foreign key. I mean, the developers of will have a foreign key to a company address. So we also want to know the salary range of this job. I'm going to define that as a string property. And let's define a Boolean property called um, remote option. Where the company offers a remote option so that you know developer or any employees can work from home. Um, let's define another property called three hours. Uh, equity sharing whether a company offers the profit sharing or not you know stuff like that um, there's some other property we define um, let's define um, job type I'm going to define a job type as an object. We're going to store those information as a lookup table into backend database. So it's going to be a job type, which doesn't exist. So we're going to go. We're going to ask the Visual Studio go ahead and create job type for us also. So we have a job type. Maybe job type ID. Um, we want to know the experience label of the candidate job seeker. And the name of the industry. Uh, let's define industry as an object we can store as a lookup table also. Industry. Okay, we need to know the size of the company. Um, well, let's define it as integer like size, like could be 50 employees company or 100 or whatever. So, company size. Um, the company size address. Okay, uh, the company type. This is a uh, company type. It's going to be a lookup table object. So basically, we can define a class as a company type. It will have basic properties like ID, name, whether it's a valid or activated, you know, stuff like that. Type ID, just the getter and setter for that. Um, it's industry, it's high industries there. Okay. Then, of course, the main detail description. Description. Or maybe better job description. That's what it is, right? Okay. Just, just for now, I'm gonna make it very simple. As we, as we think we needed new properties, we'll be adding this into uh, this model. Okay. Let's, since we, we not only we define developers job, we also define some, some. Let's go ahead and add some additional properties here. Um, This is the address ID, address of the of the company, address like address one, address two, and CD CD state and zip code and stuff like that. Let me just copy this, copy and paste the name of the gym. 
property only, lots of typing. It's a city, it's a state. It's a zip code and it's a country name. If we need additional properties, we will we'll just change it. Um, and let's go ahead and define company type also. Um, just going to be a name property, maybe a description. These are like a look lookup kind of table. Where the, let's define some Boolean properties here. Um, is active. Well, let's, let's make let's make this field required. And maybe uh, some date time. So just the metadata to to so that we can deactivate whenever we want. Okay, it requires system. That's okay. Created date. Okay, so this for the, we have similar kind of properties for the other other object also like uh, company type, um, industry type, the same thing. For example, name of the industry and description and stuff like that. Uh, I need to resolve this name resolution because couldn't recognize because I don't have a system name space defined here. Industry, it's a job type. Let's go ahead and grab the same thing. Okay, this is going to be a very simple model. Let's see, all our classes are here. Um, this also to the developer job, we can, you know, we can let's add those properties here. The idea, um, not this one. Whether this we, this way, if we, if we define this property right here, this allows us to deactivate this job once maybe already filled in or whatever. So, and when it was created, maybe some additional properties like a deactivated date or who deactivated. Okay, something like that, you know, we'll be we'll be modifying as we need it. Okay, now our basic basic structure of our model is now defined. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we need to define our uh, DB context. Uh, even before, up to now, you know, we haven't really talked about that. We first we're gonna complete our client side, our server side of the application, and we make sure it is start returning adjacent data for us, you know, and it can connect to our backend database. And then that it is uh, connecting properly, and we can save and retrieve the data. Then we can we, only after that we can start writing uh, our client side, maybe Angular JS code. Okay, so right now I'm basically writing the server side of the code just to be sure our model is now defined. Uh, let's go ahead and if you are not if you are new to uh, ASP.NET Code, they provide a couple of startup files here called the startup name of the file and program. We don't really have to modify anything into the program file. We just leave the way it is. And into the startup, we need to specify we would like to use a SQL Server. And we need to specify a couple of things like um, so in here into this method called configure services, we need to say, hey, we would like to use SQL Server into this. Um, so let's define a very first thing to use the SQL Server. We need to define the connection string. Say a connection. Okay, this is our connection string. Of course, you know, usually um, in the web form, or if you come from web form development, you there used to have a web configuration file. We used to grab those data from the web config file. But here also there is a JSON file you can read it. But in here I was just going to hard code it just to make it work. So okay, here is my connection string. Once that is connection string is defined, this this object right here, I service collection contains huge amount of method. So if you do a services, and you can you need to say what do you want to do with the services. 
to the service, I'm going to say, all right, I need to add DB. One of the method it says, okay, I need to add a DB context. Okay, of course, to use a DB context, you need to tell what kind of DB context you want to use, right? So in our case, we don't have a DB context defined. That's the, that's the very first thing we have to do. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, to, to be able to do, to do that, let's go ahead and add a folder here. I'm going to call this as a DB for deep database context. And into this DB, let's define, let's add a method here. I'm going to add a method. Let's give it the name as a developer's job context or something like that. Our whole theme is about developer job, right? Job context. This is going to be our context data context method. Of course, that's why define this method doesn't become developer context. We, of course, as you know, we have to inherit this from the object called db context. And it doesn't know what DB context is. We have to we have to now uh, resolve this. Sorry, no, this is not. I think this is a DB context. And we're gonna ask this to hey, go ahead and resolve this. It is telling us okay, use the, this is the entity framework core. That's where the object reside. We have to include that here. Okay, to use this, very first thing we have to we need to say all right, this can we can use this constructor here. This constructor takes object called db context option and in we can see right this is our context here db and then this let's just give it another developer option It is a little barbose, but it's okay. So, this is our basic constructor defined, and this constructor basically takes a parameter called db context option, and we specify our context here and name the parameter. Okay, once that is all we have to do here, it's just basically, I don't really even have to do this. Once this is defined, we're just going to say, uh, we're going to change the constructor of the parent, basically constructor of this guy right here, but we should be able to pass this option. This is all, this is our basic constructor. And we didn't say the option, but we, we said it as a, we didn't do any special thing. We defined this constructor here, that constructor takes db context option for our particular db option. And then basically say, hey, I don't, all we have to do is just call the base constructor of this guy right here, calling the base constructor. That is it. That's all we have to do. And then, if we, for example, when when if you need to modify your your model object, or there it provide a bunch of overridable method. For example, one of the very useful overridable method. Some of the there is a method called on configuring. We can override this one to configure our uh, model object, or there is another method we you, kind of useful called on model creating. Sorry, not but override on model creating. This might be this might be useful for later. So since um, just, just right now, leave, let's leave it the way it is. And then, once this object is defined, now we can go into our startup here. And uh, we can say, hey, startup. We would like you to use developer job context. 
in it doesn't know where that guy is but this would be this would figure it out it's, it, it's inside DV folder DV namespace it would resolve that one and then it takes the this lambda expressions and to it I will say hey we would like to use use SQL server as our um, say use SQL server in to it we need to provide our connection string okay for some reason it was not able to resolve this one we need to resolve this one okay so we are definitely missing some namespace using because we are not using entity core so we need to say okay this is all we have to do uh, of course now we need to do actual connection string in my so uh, since I'll be using my uh, my local SQL server database here so I need to provide the my local connection string here so that's what I will be uh, doing so the my connection string kind of looks like local connection string kind of looks like the database of course this database doesn't really exist yet so let's come up with come up name for just let's call it developer job as a name of the database that we want it, is it to create when we run the SQL, you know, the, the, the entity framework command. And we have to say trusted connection equals to true, meaning we are using the Windows authentication. We don't have connection string with the name and a, a password, but it's using the Windows authentication. This is our connection string. Of course, you, we can, in, in, a, in a production level application, we would like to store this into a configuration file. Like in JSON file, and we read it. Just for now, just just for the demo purposes, this is how our basic config, you know, uh, connection string looks like. I think it's terminated with a semicolon. Okay, we have that. Let's go ahead and save. We wrote a bunch of code, and let's make sure this builds okay without any any um, compilation error. Okay, so next thing we can do is, if you have not used the, the model first design, you know, um, the, the Intuity Framework core, just like its previous version of the Intuity Framework, we have option to create model first, and it would create a database for us, right? So let's see, um, here is our package manager console. In this console, we're going to say, hey, we want you to create... Um, we want we want you to create you know uh, basically do we, all we're trying to do is we're doing migration basically we create even a create a migration okay of course there are a couple of um, the migration uh, command that you have to know because it was a little tricky for me so I basically copy this here just to make sure um, very first thing first command we need to run is um, here this is the command we're gonna run. This is called add migration, and you uh, you have to give this name. And this is the what you know the what we migrating. So I give a name for it. I'm going to say a developer job migration. And the context job uh, context something like that. Once that is defined, hit enter. It should creating some folder. Assuming every, I did everything is okay. If there is some issue, it will tell you. Okay, so looks like it is okay. It created some migration folder here, but.
it initialized it as empty though okay why it added um, empty migration Oh, I think I forgot the amazing thing. Um, okay, <laughs> of course, you know, I have defined my because I, I cannot, I was not ready to, to do a migration yet because I have to tell to, to my uh, DB context here, all, I need to define. All the properties here. So let's go ahead and define public db set. Uh, name of our object is developer job. And let's find this object which is inside the model. And let's give property name as a developer jobs. Okay. I'm going to say add migration, but at this time I'm going to give it a little different name here. So developer job migration one. Let's see. It will this time. Would it, this would capture our object or not? Okay. Okay. Very good. This time it was able to figure out. So basically, it created a company address because we had dependency with its developer job, and we have company type, we have industry, we have job type, and finally we have developer job and all the foreign key everything. So next command we have to issue. Of course, this one is just in the mirror. It hasn't really um. Other, usually what I would like to do is I just want to make sure I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like a so I want to see in a SQL server what kind of script it also generates so I'm running my SQL server profiler I want to basically see so I kind of I, I would like to know what kind of update create script you know this the entity framework automatically generates so to capture those I just um, do that and then run this commands update database update database if you use this barbos command basically you can see all the script that was generated all the ultra you know all different kind of uh, ultra command or create or whatever or all the so let's do this is everything is good if there is no problem it should be able to we should be able to observe a bunch of script executed in our Okay, it's still running. Okay, it, it's true. Very good. It seems like it is working because it generated a bunch of script here, some index, some tables, some... Okay, let's see if it is completed or not. Okay, pretty good. At, at this point, we should have this new database created into SQL Server based on what we specified in the startup here with developer job let's go ahead and go ahead and um, oh that's not what i mean to do let's go ahead and go into my sql server and make sure this new database is created i'm going to go ahead and refresh this refresh this database and here is the here is the database called developer job and this should have some tables like um, company address company type developer jobs and industry job type etc let's examine some of the columns okay and the foreign keys and stuff of course right now you know by default it uses um n bar char max and if we have to have certain kind of data type we'll have to modify we'll talk about that later okay this can be our first video so basically what we in summary what we achieved today we were able to we create our model based and then we put our configuration, we did some basic setup, and then uh, and then basically we were able to create our, our databases and our table and stuff like that. 
starting from tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, from the next video tutorial, I will be creating controllers and then basically we start writing server-side AngularJS code to to create our, you know, um, a client-side application. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video.